so in in my last video one, one of my last videos one of the ones i recorded last night i reviewed uh what i think was my first novel ernst junger's glass bees and uh, this afternoon i'll be reviewing another novel uh, quite a different type uh, another part of the world um this one is uh called pedro peramo by juan rufo and uh, when I reviewed Last Bees last night, I completely forgot to um, issue a bit of a disclaimer. And of course, it's always a bit of a problem with uh, reviewing uh, literary fiction. Um, I don't really know how many plot points I can give away without spoiling the whole potential reading experience for anyone. So if anyone's watching this and is thinking that I'm saying too much or anything too specific, um, please go ahead and let me know because I don't want to give away so much that I just completely take away anyone's interest in reading these books because that would go directly against the whole purpose of this channel. So, um, about the book. Uh, about 10 years ago, um, not too long after I graduated from high school, uh, a friend of mine recommended this novel to me. And I'd been chatting with him uh, over the internet for a, for a number of months, and um, he was pursuing a PhD in Spanish language literature in Florida. And I asked him for a list of the books, mostly Spanish language books, that would be translated into English because I don't read Spanish, that he thinks I should read, that he thinks are really canonical and really important. And I said, make it as long as you want to make it. I need a nice extensive list. And I remember on that list, he had Pedro Peramo. And, uh, and, one, and, and, a, and another set of short stories by one Rulfo called The Burning Plain or something like that. And the name of the novel and Juan Rulfo's name were both new to me as you know, an 18 or 19 year old kid. But um, I've always been really thankful to him. I'm not in contact with him anymore, but he uh, exposed me to a number of, of other writers, uh, including uh, Jorge Amado and, and Cortazar, whom I've uh, had quite a bit of. Uh, fun reading since then. I think this is one of those novels whose historical moment is of more importance than its actual literary execution. And this might be due either to a mediocre translation, as I said I can't judge because I don't read Spanish, or Wulfo's cautious literary experimentation that falls somewhere between the recognizable realism of his day, this was published in the 50s, and the innovative so-called magical realism that would be endlessly copied soon after its appearance. Uh, my intuition is that it's a little of both. With this story, Rulfo takes some considerable steps away from realism. And just as a side note, um, the the steps away that he took that, that he took away from realism and into sort of surrealism or as we usually call it when it's applied to literature magical realism those would come to influence the next two generations of much of spanish language literature and i think that's where this book really derives its perhaps popularity is not the right word but influence it certainly is influential uh, because of the modes of experimentation in which it engages. Uh, it, it's certainly people like uh, Gabriel Garcia Marquez come to mind when you think of uh, magical realism and this is really the, the seed of that type of writing. So the novel goes that when she's on her deathbed, uh, Juan Preciado's mother uh, beseeches Juan to uh, pursue his father, whose name is Pedro Peramo, 
in this Mexican state of Comala. Soon after entering the state of Comala, which is thought to be based on the real Mexican state, Mexican state of Colima, it, he starts to realize that few of the people that he count, that that the few people he does encounter in this in this city are, um, and there are very few of them, but the few that are there are haunted and haunting. They sort of have these sort of ephemeral, ghostly presences, and Komala itself is certainly a ghost town. He hears unbearably painful moaning and caterwauling from all corners of the city and from all of the people that he encounters, and he soon realizes that almost everyone he meets in Komala is actually already dead. Uh, Komala brings a whole new meaning to uh, the phrase ghost town because it itself is inhabited by very real ghosts who are still interacting with people. Rulfo's omniscient roving narrative is particularly interesting, I thought. The point of view switches from Juan Preciado to Pedro Peramo to the woman that Juan eventually realizes was the love of his father's life, uh, Susana San Juan, uh, all of whom are also dead. Through these successive narrative shifts, Juan Preciado learns that more about his father's life. Uh, he was the impresario of Comala in its heyday, when it was a, a booming town long ago. That He was also a ruthless and shameless Lothario and was madly in love with Susana, even though she herself is haunted by the memory of her dead husband, Florencio. After Susana's death, uh, Pedro Peramo breaks down and refuses to do anything, which causes Comala to fall into its current decadent state. And halfway through the story, Juan Preciado dies but the novel goes on. The style here wasn't the only bit that seemed to be taken up by uh, uh, that seemed to be taken up. I mean, the, the themes here are familiar certainly in literature and, and definitely in Spanish language literature. You get thing, I mean, very, very obvious themes here from the quick summary that I just read the dead, uh, how they inhabit the past, um, how the dead are sometimes much more alive than those who just happen to have blood throwing through, uh, flowing through their veins, uh, remembering that the past isn't something that we remember or experience or uh, encounter in a linear objective way, but is rather tied up with emotions and poignant memories and anxieties. And finally, this is just a wonderful example of how places, too, never really die. I, I've said earlier that Komala was sort of like a ghost town, but even that is a little wrong because it makes you think that it's obsolescent or moribund. It's not. It's, it's living. It's, its modes have just been a little bit shifted. Um, so, Kamala never really dies, um, and, and the people there aren't really dead, even if no one is there to remember them. They have these characters, a pulse, all of their own, and a kind of indelible biological imprint that they may or may not uh, ever have discovered. Uh, and as I said earlier, these ideas are inseparable from much of the work of other writers like Borges, Marquez, and, and certainly uh, Faulkner. It wasn't for no reason that Borges actually called this one of the greatest novels of all time, except that he had the great fortune of being able to read it in Spanish, whereas I didn't. I would certainly encourage anyone uh, with the ability to read Spanish at this level it's, it's not a very long book at all, um, 
not a huge time investment, all of 124 pages, to do the same, to, to give it a read, and you know, even if you don't, uh, to sort of nudge you to read this, uh, if only it's to see how ubiquitous Rulfo's literary influence has actually been. Juan Rulfo's Pedro Perón.